that's one thing to do as a leader. It's another when you're leading a team and you're trying to help them fight mm-hmm. against this. What is the right way to go about that without it being weird? I think you call it out. Um, like D- Dave, oh, it's in, in, you know, in the three years I've worked here several times in that, over, over those three years, Dave has held an all company meeting. We have one every week, but he's hold a, held a specific one and said, hey, here's what's coming down the road. Here's, what's co- here's what we think's gonna happen with COVID. Here's what we think's happening with profits up. Here's what we think we're happening with profits down. Here's what's happening. And there's a one, two, three month trajectory on this. And so I'm gonna treat you like adults and just say, let's just call it is what it is. And then so we can make good decisions afterwards. So I think it's get, setting up a meeting with your team and saying, hey, everybody's struggling. I'm buying light boxes for everybody. They're 30 bucks on Amazon. I, if you want one, I'll buy you one, but you got to use it, okay? And by the way, we're going to have a gratitude minute. I have a buddy who runs as uh, a CEO of a lawn care company in Texas. He has a gratitude minute with his team. He, they just circle up before the day and say, what's one thing y'all are grateful for? Let's go around the room. And they're all like, oh my gosh, that's so cheesy. Just, we're just going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. And I'm going to make eye contact. Right, right, so some intentional things, but it all comes back to, I'm going to treat you like adults. I'm going to call out what is. It's cold. It's gray. Nobody wants to be turning wrenches right now. And we got to turn wrenches because we told our customers we would be there for them. Mm, that's great. Yeah, just be honest with them. Communicate often, frequently. And I love the idea of just going, hey, I'm going to go first. I'm doing this. I've found it really helpful. I'd love to buy one for all of you if you're willing to use it. Yeah, every, every leader needs to go first. Um, he, I'm feeling low. I'm feeling like I've got less energy. My marriage is a little bit sideways right now. I'm being extra annoying with my kids right now. And so I'm gonna do things in my life to fix it. I'm willing to help and it's gonna, I'm gonna help you in this way. Gives everyone right? permission. I love that. So outside of some of the physical things, are there any mental habits that we need to have in place to maybe overcome some of these, the negative thoughts, the self-talk that we tend to have? I think it, you said it earlier, it comes down to planning. And when it's on my calendar, um, I have a weird rule and this is just me. Um, I sit down the night before generally to plan out what my workout's going to be the next day and what my day is going to look like. And usually I put it on a note card and whatever random thing comes in my mind, if I'm not following a very strict workout plan, I have to do it. I have to do it. It's like five sets of a hundred. And I'm like, come on, dude. And I'm my own mean coach, right? But I got to do it. I got to do it. And it goes on the note card. If it's on the note card, it has to happen. Mm. And so I don't care about how I feel. I don't care about what time it is. I, I got to knock that out. Unless like my whoop straps, like this morning, I woke up and said, do not exercise today. Like you have pushed me too far, body. Great. I'm going to take a, a, today's a rest day. So that's great. Listen to your body there. I saw a great tweet yesterday. It said, negative self-talk is just do-it-yourself bullying. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great way to think about it. My self-talk DIY. is a strange mixture of my dad, my old high school coaches, and maybe a crummy boss or two. And I filter out all of the positive things my dad told me over the years. I filter out all of the encouragement and way to go Deloney's that I've received from bosses and coaches over the years. And it all just distills down through a filter of negativity into this, Only you the bad suck, stuff comes out. you loser, get off your... And that's what drives me. And that is jet fuel and it burns up real hot and it burns up real fast. And I can get a lot done in 30 days and then I'm useless for seven months, right? Mm. So... Um, it's been a journey to work through how can I build a schedule of things? How can I build a system of things that keep me well? Uh, James Clear, I think, says it best. When you get stressed, you fall to the level of your systems, not your goals, right? You fall to the level of, do I already have my dry cleaning? Do I already have um, somebody t- opening the building up in, at the shop? Do I uh, already have a breakfast schedule with my wife? Do I already have a weekly check-in with my kids? You fall to the systems, right? And I can be exhausted. I was super exhausted this week. Hank, my son, my 12-year-old, was like, Dad, are we going to Cracker Bur- I mean, uh, what, Waffle House on Tuesday? I literally was like, the last thing my digestive, sy- my digestive system needs is another morning at Waffle House. I need sleep, man. And I said, yeah, buddy, I'll, we'll be there. I'm, I'll, we're going. And he's like, can we go early? I'm like... Wow. Yep. And so the energy it, of a 12 year old. But it man. felt to the level of my system, right? I got the systems in place. And so then the behavior, then we had a great time. I ended up loving it. I went to work in a better mood than I would have been. So all those things work because it falls all over your systems. And so I just have to be honest about what, what are the things that keep me healthy and well. Yeah. 